So, sharpening saws is not brain surgery. It's really, really simple. You just have to be consistent. But they can be used in brain surgery. Right? <laughs> they can. So you think you want a sharp one for that? <laughs> <laughs> or in, in hip re yeah, right. <laughs> So anyway, what I'm going to show you is pretty much what's on the back of this. Okay, those, are the, those are the processes you go through in sharpening a saw. And uh, got about five pages there, little jigs that you can make and uh, of a, a saw vise that the tag grid made. And I made a couple of those, a big one and a little one. And it's been so long since I did the workshop that I put it away in a good place and couldn't find it. So I had to build new ones. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we'll see how that goes and I'll go through it with you. If you really want a simple but definitive approach to saw sharpening, dynamite pacing. You get this through the wooden boat store. Okay. And I have since that time I've come across Paul Sellers. You really need to write down Paul Sellers. He's on YouTube. And he goes through saw sharpening. And he's kind of boring uh, because he does the whole thing. Like, he'll do a whole saw, show it to you. But for him, it's only a few minutes. For me, it takes an hour. Uh, so, and he also shows you how to recut teeth. And it's pretty simple. So, like, if I have a saw, like, this little one that I picked up, these teeth are shot, and they're really fine teeth. It's like. 14 or 15 points per inch. So if you take your your ruler and set it down and measure how many points are along that one inch, you could have PPI. There used to be an old designation called teeth per inch, which is one less than points per inch. But points per inch is pretty much what's acceptable today. So I just brought that in to show you one of It's really trash. Pastor, huh? And I haven't done anything with it yet. Now, you can get your saw sharpened at a saw shop. I got this old Biston miter saw sharpened at a saw shop. And you can see how they did it. The thing with the machine, though, is that the gullet goes straight across. And if you have a cross-cut saw, the gullet should be on an angle, like 20 degrees or thereabouts. Uh, this one, I don't know if you want to look at it or not, but this one shows the gullet the way that it should be. Okay, now, let's look at back saws first. Paul Sellers says you don't need a back saw with any more teeth than 15 points per inch. Now you can get them a lot finer. He said you, you can do anything you want to with 15. And I have an old one here, and it's it's cut cross cut, and I have a new one. And that one is, is a rip saw. And they both are 15 teeth point per, per inch, but this one has a lot thicker saw plate than the old one. So you get a lot finer curve, a lot finer cut with the old one. So you can take a look at those. Those are gents saws. Uh, a lot of people don't like that handle. This is the handle that a lot of people like. I like this handle too. And this is a 
This is a dovetail saw, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, this is a little heavier, it's not any bigger, but it'll be more like considered to be a carcass saw because of the heavy, the heavy saw plate, uh, where this is a lot finer. And then, what's the next one here? Tenon saw. So if you're going to have a set of back saws, you want, uh, okay, the carcass saw. And they, they overlap a little bit when it comes to 14 points per inch. This is 14 points too. And dovetail saw. And maybe a tenon saw. And the, the bigger saws, you can cut, you can get them cut both uh, cross cut and uh, both cross cut and uh, rip saws. But for Dovetail saws, Paul Seller said, with with the 14 or 15 teeth, you only need a, a, a rip saw cut on the teeth, and it works just fine. So, we'll take a look at, the next thing we'll take a look at is saw vices. That one that's in the handout is really nice, the Tag Freed made. But then on the other hand, Paul Seller said, look in your scrap box, get a piece of wood, slice it, and you have an instance saw clamp right there. So it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to buy a saw vise, which is another thing I had and put away safe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, these work really well. And here's a larger one for the full size saws. Just took a piece of scrap. I cut this on, the, I think I cut it on the band saw. You should have a, a little washer inside here. And you can clamp that, and of course it sets so that the, the saw handle will fit in there. And you can cut a full size saw with one of these. So it won't cost you a thing. And that's the key. You want to keep the cost them, of course. And they work just as well. If you come across a good saw, uh, saw vise at a yard sale or something, get it. But otherwise, you don't need it. This is done with scrap. And uh, as I, I found when I put it together that the plywood was warped a little bit, so I might have to use a clamp on one end. But it's pretty easy to use. And I'll probably butcher this saw when it comes to showing the type of sharpening. This thing was a mess when I got it. It was bent that way, and then it was bent this way, and it's still, well, it's still, still a little bent. What I did was, you want, you want to have your saw plate straight. And what I did was just take it. Okay. pretty straight now. So just use the dead blow on it. Uh, you're going to need light. This works pretty well. Payson says use natural light so have your saw bench set up by a window. And uh, that's a good idea. But the thing is, when you cut your gullets on your 
that's the bottom of the blade uh, tooth, when you cut your gullets, they will reflect back so you can tell where you've already cut. I got this this week, and uh, it's really nice. So if you're doing small blades, you can really see where the gullets are. John, you left it all loose. <laughs> That's what you get for loaning it out. Yeah. <laughs> I have a pin head, which is a problem. And I have a fan head. <laughs> <laughs> this costs thirty-seven dollars. That's cheap. That's a bargain. It's it's bad bad. Park, where do you get that? The lenses are good. Amazon? Too. Where else? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then and you, you, have, you, you can. Uh, on that. <laughs> where, where did you get it? We got it at Amazon. And I think it's European. Look, I got it on. Yeah. I saw a guy do used one of these uh, a couple of weeks ago on YouTube. I thought, man, that's the way to go. Okay, so it flips up or down, and you can use actually two of them if you need them, and you can see what you're doing. And uh, I may or may not need it here. But it also has a light, and the light will reflect back so you can see the gullets. Or this one you can use. All right. Now, this guy, I cut it as a cross cut. And the reason the tape is here is because. When you file, the gullets are filed or cross cut down a little and back toward the handle a little. And it doesn't matter a whole lot. It's usually about 15 degrees angle on the front of the tooth or a little less. And maybe 20 degrees back that way to the gullet. And down about 10 degrees. So, as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter a whole lot. That's where the fact that it's not brain surgery comes in. As long as you're consistent. Okay, so, because I put the tape here, when I cut the gullet, it made a little cut in the tape. You do every other tooth. Then you flip it around and you do every other tooth the other way. So, you, can, you won't lose track of where you are. Uh, Payson said, make a dot on every other tooth. That too, takes too much time, it's real pain. And so, I, again, you too, show, show them this one. And uh, I would probably, depending on the size of the teeth you're using, you use a, a large, the appropriate file. The key to this is that the side should be about twice the width of the front of the tooth. Okay, twice the width. So you don't even have to worry about numbers that much. It should be about twice the width. Would there be any drawback to using one wider than that? Not really. It's not a problem. But the key is this way it wears evenly and you can use it a lot longer. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I think I used a, a five double extra slim on this. And uh, they go slim, extra slim, and double extra slim. Now I got my files at Wick Hardware, they're Nicholson. They're okay, but uh, was I think Lee Valley has a set that are high quality. You can get a whole set. But do you think you need the whole set? What if you just well, got no. the, what if you just got the biggest one? Well, all you need is a seven-inch slim, extra slim, and double extra slim, 
and maybe a five or six inch uh, double extra slim. Uh, you don't need many, according to, again, according to sellers. He, he lists, uh, and I have it written, I wrote it down. And you guys should take a look at these, these books. This is Christopher Swartz's. It's all about hand saws. Anything you ever want to know about hand saws. But, uh, I think I have it here where it's easy to find. I wrote it somewhere else. I write things there. Oh, here it is. Okay. Seven inch taper, seven inch extra taper, seven inch slim taper, and maybe a seven inch extra slim taper. Uh, those are for 10 point. But uh, I like to use six a lot. And uh, when you get down to these fine, fine teeth, it's a real, real pain. So, this hasn't had anything to, done to it. This is what you'd find at a yard sale. You know, they'd find they splattered paint on it, and they painted it so they could recognize it, all that good stuff. And uh, so I'll, I'll play with this one. Be maybe a half inch above. Yeah. The tape has some wrinkles. Yeah. You just have to fiddle with it a little bit. That looks pretty even. So it should reflect, and if it doesn't, I'll use the headpiece. This is nice, and it? it has both incandescent, which you can't buy anymore, I guess, and uh, fluorescent, so it gives you a nice quality of light with both of them. Okay, so seven teeth per, or seven points per inch. That means I could use the seven inch here. Seven inch slim will do the job. Okay. Now, there are five things that you really can do. You don't necessarily need to. Like, this already has a pretty good set in it. So technically, I wouldn't have to set it. Uh, I'll show you how to do it anyway. Uh, and I'll just run through this. The first thing you're going to do is join it, which means you're going to make all the teeth at the same level. And there are lots of ways to do it. I just do it by hand. You use a mill or a bastard, either one. And you can see where some of the teeth now have a shine on top. Well, you want to get all the teeth that have just at least a little bit. Mm, pretty close. You'd have to come in with two. But don't, don't saw your hand. Uh, there are a couple there that don't quite get down. But the whole thing, Looks pretty good, I'll do one more. Yeah, I think we're good enough. Okay. Now, they have commercial jointer. Uh, jigs. And I got this from uh, Curtis Sluter. Used to be one of our guys. He lives in uh, Rhode Island now. 
And this is a really nice little piece. And you just, of course, this would have to be up further. And you just run it along and it does the job. What does that do? That joints the blade the, so that all the teeth are on the same level. Okay. This and this do the same thing. Oh, okay. okay. So you don't need to buy this, although they're cool. And safer. Yeah. Uh, okay, so at this point, I'm ready to take a look at the shape of the teeth and how far down I have to go. So, what I want to do, if, if I'm shaping the teeth, is that I go straight across the way I do it if I were going to do a rip saw. So, get all my junk out of the way so I can stand there. Okay. Now, there are lots of things that will help you do this. We have little gauges here with little angles on them so that you can get, like, you get the angle of the gullet, 65, 65 degrees here. You put that on your file and it helps you go all the way down. And uh, that's, this is, this would be for a rip saw. It, it's vertical, but generally maybe four or five degrees back would help on a rip saw so it saws easier. Paul Sellers, again, he's the guru. Uh, he starts one inch at, at maybe eight degrees, another inch at about six degrees, and then the rest of the way at about four degrees. Because the reason you have the, the, this back angle is so that it will start easier and, and push through easier. Okay, so in our case, this is gonna be this will be a cross cut. Uh, yeah, about 15 degrees back, maybe a little less. So you see on here, yeah, I can see it here. It, it comes back like that a little bit. So you're going back, and you're going back and going down those three angles that you, you have to fiddle with. But it doesn't uh, amount to much once you're doing it. So I'm just gonna go through here and get these, get these teeth about. And again, I'm just doing it. I'm not even using the gun. And you go to the back of the next two usually. It shows up this. Yeah, this is a little too big. The gullet is too big on it. So it's a six inch. Oh perfect.
and Sellers does this on his demos. And that's why it gets boring. I, I fall asleep sometimes because he has the kind of voice that'll put you to sleep. He's from uh, England. And he can, he can tell you about just about any hand tool you want to hear about. Yeah, you can come back. You see how it reflects on top there? Mm -hmm. So that'll give you a get rid of it by pushing it back. Doesn't matter, half and half. Oh, okay. But uh, generally, like when you're when you're doing for the cross cut, it's half and half. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably not going to get rid of all of it here. I'll get rid of the rest of the cross cut. It takes so long, but that's, that's the process. You should get a nice, nice rhythm going. Maybe two, two swipes. To get it for you. So rather than counting your strokes, you're you're making the flat on the top disappear. Yeah. Uh, but I generally do about two strokes, mm -hmm. and it works pretty well. And of course, when I when I do the cross cut part, that'll finish it off. Yeah. <clears throat> now I'm not saying this is the correct way to do it. This is just the way I do it. put it through a machine and you know those first two blades I showed you huh? you end up with a gullet that goes straight across it on a cross cut which isn't good oh, it's a, okay. you want that back a little and down a little so that you can uh, the sawdust will clears the come out better. of it yeah. right? yeah. it clears the sawdust better thank you <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. the word I was looking for Sharpening, if you did, See, sharpening a pole saw, it would be different. Uh, you know, I don't think you can sharpen pole saws. Okay. They're, the blades are real hard, and the teeth are such that I don't think you can sharpen them. Okay. You'd need a totally different file also. It's a, have you ever seen one? Oh, yeah. It's like a diamond shape. Right. Yeah. Very, very thin. Yeah. that I showed you that was done, that was done at Thanos, so. Thanos, yeah. Now I can see where I was because the gullet reflects back. See that gullet reflecting back? So you know where you went. get through this in a second. So, a hundred years ago, actually, how I, did they sharpen the salts? Huh? A hundred years ago, when you bought like this. Salt. Well, okay. And they were quick at it. I'll tell you a story. 
Uh, Roy Underhill, one of his uh, episodes showed a really nice uh, saw vise that stood by itself that you could build. And it angled back 10 degrees, which is what you want. Oh, so the file can run level. Yeah, the, the file, file can be level. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, the story was, in this shop, it's like 20s or 30s, uh, every Friday this old Italian saw sharpener would come, come into the shop and sharpen everybody's saws. Well, the manager was real nosy. He'd stick his nose into it. He wouldn't ask anything or say anything, but he'd have his nose over the guy's shoulder when he was, uh, when he was sharpening. Then one day, the, he wasn't there. So the guy came in and he said, okay, I'm gonna show you how to sharpen your saws today and I won't be back again. But don't you tell that SOP how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. You better be straightforward if you're curious. really need to do this because these saw teeth are already in pretty good shape. You have to do that on both, from both sides? or Not side? if it's a rip. Huh? Not if it's a rip saw, oh. which I've been doing. One, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, all the way down to here. So I'm going to stop that. And now it's time to consider whether the teeth are, that's actually pretty sharp. It's not a dull one, but I'm doing it because the teeth are nice, and they're only seven, seven points, which goes faster than eight or ten. Half the time of a fourteen point. <laughs> it took me forever on a fourteen point. You know, I, I, I won't even, won't even think about it. Uh, like this one, I think I'm going to recut it as a rip saw. Right now, it's a cross cut. We'll try it on a piece of wood and see if it works. So at this point then would be the time to get the angle on the curve. Okay, so you're going to set it. And in order to set it, there are a couple of different kinds of sets. two kinds of sets. One is like a pistol grip and the other is, is horizontal. And there's the hammer and the anvil. So as you press the handle down, this part goes in and the anvil is here. And you can turn it. Now this one doesn't have any numbers on it. Uh, this one does. Supposedly it has the number of points per inch on it, and you just dial it in. And, yeah, maybe so. It, it works, but uh, it's pretty, pretty iffy. I have a Lee Valley one, and the instructions that came with it said the numbers are basically there for reference, not because you, they yep. actually correspond. Exactly. And what you have to do is measure them. Yep. <laughs> And what they say is that the bend shouldn't be any more than half the width of the saw mm -hmm. blade. So half the width, half the width. And so depending on the thickness of the saw blade, it would take a different set anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, and of course this is to get it nice and tight and you'd start on the one side This one going that way. So you can sit. I hate to I hate to loosen this up because I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna be cutting on it. Uh, okay. 
This one's sharp, and it's uh, oh, this is a, a really nice uh, rip saw. One of the two-handed ones, you know, where you, you can use both hands to get down there. Plus, it's got huge teeth. Yeah, uh, five five teeth, five points per inch, and so I'd be going to five here more or less. And I usually go a little less. And look down, I can tell where they start. There we go. So it's set on there, and the tooth comes down and gets it. And you do every other one, and then flip it over and do every other one. The other one. And it takes a while, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Now, you, do you have to set the teeth every time you sharpen the saw, or? Not necessarily. Just it just depends, depends on how far on... down you have to go to get the teeth sharp. Yeah. Okay. No, you can sharpen. You you can. That's not a problem. So it's the main thing is to shape them so they're the right shape. Even and, but just leave the set the way it was on the saw. Yeah, if there's a good set on it, just leave it alone. And most of the time there is. Like this one is set pretty. So now, after you go through that, every other one, flip it over, go back to every other one, uh, you get a nice set on the teeth. So at this point, this is where my little trick here comes in, because I'm going to go down about 10 degrees and back a little bit, and I have to figure out... Yeah, okay, starts here, just like that, and the gullet, so the back of the tooth that, that uh, points away from you is where you start, so you can see what you're doing, always have the handle back toward the handle of the saw. It's all consistent. Nice. It looks like you'd do better to have a more steady bench to clamp back in. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a better vice at home. This, this is a stop gap here that Russ brought because we didn't have anything that worked. So the bench is actually new. <laughs> yeah. And I have a heavy bench too. Yeah, you want to have to be But even, even so, you know, it still works. And you have to, you probably need to go through this several times. And so, so I have to fiddle with it a lot, as you can see. Trying to 
get down to where it cuts into the tape. So an hour later, <laughs> you can see how it's just easy, just repetition, just keep doing it. And if, if uh, you still have a little uh, reflection on top here, when you flip it over, then you finish it off so it's gone. And then you're going to find, as you do this, that these facets on top here are triangular too. So that even helps. And uh, that isn't really working on this because I chopped it up. Uh, I, I apologize for being late. So is the angle usually pretty much the same on most saw blades? Or? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so your your cross cuts are pretty much the same. When you shape the blades, though, you're shaping it as though it's going to be a a, a rip saw. So you get them to the shape you want, then you start your every other one, flip it around every other one, and that's all there is to it. Now I'll I'll finish this off. But it gets it gets easier as you go along. Then you can see what you did as you go along too. Maybe it gets easier as you work towards the vice. Yeah, not necessarily. You just get the feel for it. It's one of those uh, muscle memory things. Just like a sport, you have to do enough of it so it starts to feel right. Yeah. And like after I'd get through this, I'd be in pretty good shape. You know, and then I wouldn't do it again for five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's all there is to it. Uh, when I did a workshop, you may remember Art Wilson did the workshop, and these people were in there trying to sharpen their saws and get it right, like me bumbling along. Uh, Art picked up a file and zip, 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 zip. He was done. He was a quick, quick study. Uh, so it depends on who's doing it, you know, and how it feels. You shouldn't have any problem. I mean, it's worth, even worth taking an hour to do it. Paul Sellers said he can do it in 10 minutes. And he can, he's sharpened so many of them, you know. Uh, for his classes, he sharpened all his saws for years. So this already feels halfway sharp and the, and the ends are, still halfway flat. I'll finish it off at home. Um, anything else you need to know? In your handout it says mentions removing the burr. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll go back to this. <clears throat> okay, so we widened the curve, we sharpened, and then honing. If you have too much too much burr or too much angle to the curve here, uh, you can run a fine stone over it and it'll take off the burr and it'll narrow the curve a little. You brought in a, a dovetail saw one time that you said wouldn't cut. And remember I, I ran I ran the stone over it, uh -huh. cut like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You, you run the stone below the set, or, no. or uh, how do you keep the... Let me see. Or you angle it back a little bit. Oh, here's, here's, here's the stone. stone. Yeah. It's quite as well. Uh, I'm going to take it off here. Like that. Just, like that. Yeah, just flat against the side. Yeah. With not much pressure. No. And it, it'll just take the just take the edge off. You can hear it catch. And, uh, this is a pretty good saw. So I need to go home and finish it off. That's a that's a real saw. That's I a bought a new saw once. Yeah. I've got one of those my father gave me. 
and I bought a new saw once, and it was just a terrific disappointment. Those actually cut wood. Yeah. The new ones, you kind of fight with them, and they don't, they don't work at all. You and need it to must be because of their the old ones were hand sharpened. Yeah. Well, that plus the old ones were better steel. And different steel. Oh, here's another thing. Uh, the old ones, like an old Viston. Now this one is not a Viston. This is a fairly cheap one. It's just warranted steel. That's okay. Uh, what is it? Uh, there's a Simmons, S-I-M-M-O-N-D-S, which is a Northwestern, old Northwestern outfit. If you find any of those, they're good. Or it might be Simon's, point anyway. Uh, and there's a Simmons, which was a big hardware outfit in Ohio, who made good saws. And uh, I can see the hammer marks on that. Like, almost looks like you can see the forging. No. Yeah. Just, oh, this just was, rust. Yeah, this was one that, that uh, I think this was the one that I put through the electrolysis. I, I think I need to do it some more. But anyway, this one is, yeah, it's Simon's. This is the Northwestern one. It's a nice song. It's a real nice song. And it needs to be finished too. And then this is a Distin. I had a lot of Distin sauce from yard sales. People didn't know what they are doing anymore. <laughs> This is really beat up. And Phoenix. This is a Phoenix, whatever that is. But you know it's old. Look at that handle. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's probably good. Yeah. And the thing about these, I don't think this one has it, is that a lot of them have less thickness up here than they do down at the peak. So they're they're ground, so, it so they're drag through the curve. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. like the distance would be like that, little distance. Uh, so if you want a cross cut, eight to ten PPI would be good to have in your collection. Uh, and if you want, if you want a rib saw, you know, four to six PPI. And then when it comes to back saws, all you really need is 14 or 15 PPI. Uh, gent saw or, or one with a pistol grip. I like pistol grip one. Uh, YouTube shows how to put a pistol grip on these. I like YouTube. Uh, and uh, so you have the dovetail, uh, dovetail saw is all you need with, with a, a rip cut on it. Uh, carcass saw, you could get a rip and a cross cut. And maybe uh, the bigger saw, what's the one? Tenon saw, uh, you could get either a rip or a cross cut on it. Uh, and that's all you need as far as back saws go, uh, if you need that much. And then a rip and a cross cut full size saw. Boat makers like short saws, 20 inches, 22 inches, because they can get into places. And they're around panel saws. They're around, you can get them. And uh, that's all you need. You don't need. Like here, it's like twice as many saws as you need, at least. But, you know, I was on a yard sale kick for a while. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, uh, John Whitehouse had a whole pile of them. He talked me into buying them from him at one of our yard sales. So. <laughs> he collected them from yard sales, too. Yeah, so I got it second. He said, the hell with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had it with that. He didn't want to deal with it anymore, so he gave them to me. <laughs> okay, so that that's it. You can look this stuff over if you want. I think. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, yeah, thanks Mike. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
Mike, a question about the economics of it. Anyone who uses a plane or chisel has to learn how to sharpen their chisel. Their yeah. chisels. But with a saw, when it gets dull, you just buy a new one. Because you're not Today. having to buy your files, you're not having to buy your set of stuff. Or send it off to, you know, Oregon Saw Works. No, no, just buy a new one. <laughs> well, if you have a distant, you're not going to buy a new one. What do the, the saws cost? Uh, you can $2. spend all kinds of money on it. No, yeah. but a new one. A new one? You can spend like $180 on that. Oh, that much? Seriously? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, then, yeah. You're better off to get an old one. Spend an hour, you know? Okay, and, and, and I, I buy a couple of files. You buy a saw for twenty, thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah, and they're, they're made out. Of wait until you try it. It yeah. just doesn't. You, yeah. It doesn't do what you're used to. It just doesn't cut you, very well. Yeah. You, you have to throw it away after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's no, your what's you your trick for like these guys? Yeah, because yeah. they're always just terribly rusty. Yeah, uh, I have electrolysizing, and then also you can use a razor blade and then find wet and dry. Twelve hundred. Yeah. yeah. It looks pretty good. Right? I, I use um, uh, really fine wet or dry with kerosene. Yeah. And uh, I do that on my table saws and all, all my yeah. uh, tools that yeah. you know when they get flash rusted. Yeah. But I was wondering if you did anything else. Okay. Well, you do the electrolysis. Yeah. Right? But I haven't I had my grandfather's saw that hung in the uh, 